Thanks, so I want to bring in two uh, perfect people to discuss this subject further. Tom Fuentes is a former assistant director of the FBI. And Shan Wu is an attorney and a former federal prosecutor. Shan is the lawyer among us right now. I'm going to ask you about Donald Trump's response. It's 19 pages. I know we just kind of threw it at you because the news is breaking. I don't know if you were able to read all through it, but he seems to have a really big issue, uh, or at least as lawyers do in their presentation, with the, um, with the DOJ's argument that this judge doesn't even have jurisdiction because the complainant, Donald Trump, doesn't even have standing, being that those documents are presidential records that don't belong to him. So but how do you read what Donald Trump has answered? I mean, I would break it down into uh, the Trump legal team is really trying to blur some lines here, and it's, it's in two areas. The first area is this question um, in trying to respond to DOJ saying that you don't have standing, there's no need for a special master here. They're trying to lay so much onto the fact that it's Trump's personal residence and he's the president. They're conflating a lot of things here. Uh, this is not the time in the case where you would typically move to suppress based on a bad search warrant. And let's remember, the search warrant was already approved by a magistrate judge. What they're doing here is they're really kind of conflating some basic first-year concepts in law school about the Fourth Amendment. Uh, the Fourth Amendment famously was said by Justice Stewart to say that it protects people, not places. They're putting so much emphasis on this was the former president's home. It's his home. Of course he can challenge it this way. No. That protection, the constitutional protection against an unreasonable search and seizure, that's safeguarded by judges who have to find probable cause. It's not safeguarded by special masters, which are typically used actually mostly in civil cases. So that's their attempt to continue to blur this line. They're trying to really attack the search warrant without attacking it by asking for the special master. And it's very light um, on legal citation and legal analysis. Uh, so that's part of my initial take on it. <laughs> I mean, I, the first part when I was reading that you have an expectation of privacy, I thought, no, you don't. Not when a magistrate says the government is allowed to come in because there's probable cause that they've weighed uh, may, may exist that a crime committed. So expectation of privacy, you can't film me in my bathroom. <laughs> but that was an odd argument. Okay, so um, Tom Fuentes, I always, always love your point of view as a former assistant director of the FBI. Um, the, the true social that Donald Trump put out kind of slammed the agents saying they threw all my documents all over the ground. I didn't do that. I didn't leave it. They're making it look like I was messy and, and careless with them. Um, and, and they also were so like the, the DOJ was so, I guess, just plain English in their 38 pages that it, like I said, it, it read like a novel. I wanted you to comment on both those things. Number one, isn't that SOP right there, that picture we're seeing, standard operating procedure, you photograph evidence, you know, on location, you know, as a, as a preservation litigation technique. And then also the notion that that, that filing was just like riveting reading and easy for, you know, non-lawyers like me. You know, you can read hundreds of pages, uh, Ashley, whether it's the affidavits or search warrants or other rulings, motions, filings, but a picture is always worth a thousand words. And that picture, when that went out to the public, I think was extremely designed to discredit Trump, make him look sloppy, try to bolster a DOJ argument that he was sloppy in his handling of these very sensitive documents. And to me, that was an extremely unprofessional act on whoever put those files on the floor and took that picture. I think, it, uh, you know, in a trial, you would uh, try to make a motion that that's extremely prejudicial to make it look like Trump was just so reckless that he would throw these files on the floor, helter-skelter, uh, without regard for that. When you've got other so people that So that's interesting. Have been... Tom, I didn't know that you would say that. I thought you would say the agents often will photograph things on location, because you saw the big exhibit yep. 2A that they, you know, tent, tent carted there as if to say, we did this, not he did this. This is our yeah, work. We put the little note there. They will photograph items as they are to show what they found in plain view, you know, how, how it existed when they went in that room. They don't take the file, jet. and in this case, it looks like just the file covers are spread out deliberately uh, in that manner, and who else would have spread them out? You know, we can't imagine Trump leaving those file folders just scattered on the floor all the time, and, uh, and then suddenly they came in, found that, and photographed it as is. So 
the fact that they claimed that they wanted to take that picture to show just, you know, what these file jackets look like and all of that, uh, to me, that was a very extremely unprofessional act to do it that way. Interesting. Okay, and then I want you to just comment on something that was attached to the filing last night. I wasn't expecting that they were actually going to just like, you know, pin the, the subpoena onto the filing. But when you read through the subpoena, there's a teensy tiny little acronym at the bottom that I think would go unnoticed by a lot of people, except for people like you, Tom. And it's, it's about all of the kinds of documents that they wanted to come in and get. This is the subpoena to come in and get documents. And at the bottom, one of the acronyms is S slash FRD. And I'm going to highlight it in there because it's way at the bottom. On, it's like fourth from the very last thing. S slash FRD. We've talked about the other ones, you know, NoForn and Orcon and all these other top secret ones. But this one, Tom, as I understand, it refers to nuclear documents. Um, what do you know about that? I don't know. Uh, you know, we've heard this rumor from the beginning that they were looking for nuclear related, uh, related documents. Um, you know, it wouldn't be the launch codes or anything like that. Now, Trump early in the administration said that he wanted to have our nuclear arsenal revamped, that some of the rockets had been in the in the silos for a long time, maybe were rusting, maybe they wouldn't fire if they were needed. And so he wanted to upgrade that as part of his overall military upgrade. So there could have been memos from him where he's directing the upgrade or the reinspection of nuclear material or things like that, that it wouldn't be that sensitive and wouldn't need to be so overly classified because you would expect that. You would expect to be upgrading your military equipment if it was like that. So it could be to me, um, I think it's a stretch. And if we had nuclear documents, that would have been out already, scattered on the floor for us to have a picture of. Well, as I looked into it, it's, it's, uh, it's called secret formerly restricted data. It refers to nuclear. It doesn't mean that it was formerly restricted. It means that formerly it was under the Atomic Energy Act and then, you know, ended up moving into, you know, the, the, um, the Pentagon and, and defense, which I thought was super fascinating. I, I know we'll learn more about it as the case unfolds. I need both of you to stay in place, if you would. There has just been so much talk about the storage room where almost all the 100 classified documents were found. But those three documents that were found in the desk drawer upstairs, why are they perhaps more important than the other documents? And why might those three documents change everything about his defense tactic? We're Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.